Hello there, welcome back to Tuck and Cash. I hope you are doing well. As many of you know, the Wingspan Oceania expansion just hit the digital platform. So I thought this might be a good time for us to do a little bit of starting hand analysis because, you know, the new expansion come with 95 new birds and yes, the nectar system. I think it really changes the game up quite a bit. So I think it's time for us to get a little bit of practice, especially for picking a good starting hands and playing the first round. So I think that's what we're going to do here. And yeah, let's take a look at the first hand here. Um, quite a few birds that really stand out. Um, the, the Princess Stephanie Astropia, definitely one of my favorite bird in the forest. Um, because you get to lay eggs when you activate your forest. That's like a premium in Oceania, given the nerf to the grassland. Um, and then the, the Australian shell duck, Brown Power, is also one of my favorite. Um, you, you get to draw a card from the face-up tray that's either Cavity or star, na star Nest. And you get to either reset or refill the tray before you do so. So you get to see a lot more cards. And yeah, I think it's a good jumpstart to your wetland here. Um, I mean, let's take a look at the tray. Nothing too interesting. Most of the bird from the, ocean, from the European expansion that we have seen before. Nothing really I want to pick up here. But what about the bonus card? Um, also pretty boring bonus card. Um, but I, I think this is a good pick. Um, with a wetland and forest option, getting egg in the forest. And with the Oceania, you start with a nectar. So even though both two birds cost four food, but you can basically start with that, um, with the extra nectar. So I think that's a pretty solid start here. All right, going second here. Ooh, we have quite a few interesting options as well. So the Australian Outlet Nightjar, that's a really good ping power. So um, whenever your opponent gain food, you can gain a grub from the bird feeder and that's usually abundant of grub in the feeder. So that's definitely a good starting bird. Um, very flexible with the, um, with the habitat as well. Um, what other bird? Bower bird. Um, choose another player, both game one grub. I haven't really played this bird that much, but it's cheap, it's a good force option, and you know, you don't really have to activate it if you don't, if you're not feeling generous. So, I think these two are a good start. Um, Zeba Finch. Um, if this player has a grub, you get a tug. Not the greatest because of the condition to get the tug, and it's only one point, so lightly gonna pass on that. Um, the only thing that I'm looking at is do you, do I want to keep the Galenu? Um, so the Galenu is big point birds, and then you get an extra, 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 extra card draw from the wetland. Um, and that's one thing I noticed with Oceania as well, because, you know, you have much more, you know, you have easier access to food. Um, sometimes the bottleneck of the game is finding those big point birds that's worth playing. So, um, especially if I'm going to be playing um, the Bower bird, I'm going to have extra access to food. So it might make sense to keep some big point birds so that you can play them. Again, Australian Night Jar also give you extra food, so... Yeah, I'm tempted to keep the to keep the Galenu here just for the big points. So, and then bonus card, Citizen Scientist is always a tricky one. It's tempting, but it's hard to score. So, lightly going with the Parry Manager here. Um, yeah, I think that that's a reasonable start with two food and nectar. Lightly gonna get, gain free food from the night jar. So yeah, that's really not that much problem of playing the Galenu. So I think that's a good keep here. Um, yeah, let me let me know what do you think of the the pig. I think this hand is pretty straightforward, and then the Galenu is is up to personal taste. All right, let's take a look at a second set of hands. How about that? All right, 
so we're gonna do the same thing let's see if we get an interesting hand here Ooh, all right not too many um european expect the oceanic expansion bird but the mannequin the mannequin is one of my favorite game and power um, so you get to play another bird at the end of the game and ignore one egg. It's one food, it got star nest. Very tempting to keep this. Nut hatch is a good forest option. And then rough, you know, good wetland option, especially in round one. Um, with extra access to cart in, in, in Oceania, you're going to get a lot of tugs um, if you get it down early. So I think that's a pretty straightforward pick here. Um, the train, nothing really jump out to me. Um, again, a lot of bird from European expansion. But I, again, I think this is a solid start. Um, with the nectar, maybe play the rough first. Yeah, with the nectar, you can play the rough and the nut hatch, and then that basically will jumpstart your game pretty nicely. Um, it's pretty. The star nest is going to be good for the first end of round go as well. So. Pretty solid pick, pick here. Again, pretty boring bonus card here. Lately going with the large bird. Um, even though it's not a great start for large bird specialists. But I feel like that's going to be better than visionary leader here. Yeah, pretty straightforward pick here. It's just so interesting how that one extra nectar just changes the starting hand so much. Like you just get to keep... A lot more birds um so this is an interesting starting hand as well um the one that really jump out to me definitely the the pigeon goose pick me goose okay pigeon pick me pick me goose all right so you get to draw two cards and then give one to another player um yeah so you you have a choice so you get to see more card and you give the the lesser card to your opponent um and then the silver eye also pretty good um even though all player gain nectar um but without any other action any other option i think that's a that's a good card to either jumpstart your forest and i've seen people play this in the wetland as well so you get to gain nectar um while while gaining card um, not looking at the woodpecker, not the bittern, the rosella, the eastern rosella. Um, I think I've reviewed this bird and concluded that I'm not a fan. So all player gain one nectar and you gain one extra grain. So compared to the silver eye, you know, you it is better than the silver eye, the, the power, because you gain extra nectar or extra grain, but you also have to invest more food in it to begin with. And the habitat is not as flexible as the silver eye. So I think I still like the silver eye here. Um, I think the really the question is like, you know, do I play the silver eye in the, in the, in the grassland, the wetland, or in the forest? Um, anatomist or breeding manager? Maybe anatomist in this case, two birds with three points. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean the the it, it is a real question. Where do you play the silver silver eye here? Do you play in the forest or the grassland or the wetland? I think if you already have an option in the wetland, maybe the consideration is in the grassland or um, the forest. Um, in the forest, certainly, you know, you can gain three food at a time, including nectar. So that's going to be a really quick jump start for your for your game. But playing in the grassland as well is great. You know, following the base game meta where you gain eggs and you get nectar. Um, I think in this case, I'm leaning for I'm leaning towards to playing this in the grassland. Um, just because, you know, you get to gain egg and nectar to begin with. Um, and laying egg in Oceania is just such a pain. Um, so, yeah. I I think that's what I would go with. So here, start with a... Start with a rough. Um, 
Another thing that I'm trying to feel out is also how you spend the nectar in each, each habitat. Um, my feeling is, yeah, the nectar point competition um, is tight and it's, it, 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 it is a determining factor in many games. Like you really want to make sure you compete for some of the nectar points. Same for the end of round goals here. Losing all three of them is like a nine points lead for your opponent, which is huge. Um, so yeah. I think I think in this case I'm leaning to play in grassland and then gain enough food and gain enough card to pivot to forest later, maybe. I mean let me know what you think. Um let's see if I can Alright. Ooh, another cheap bird to play um in the forest, so um that's a that's a pretty good start. So yeah, in this case, you know, Gain the nectar and then use the nectar to play the pigeon goose. Um, nectar certainly help here, so yeah. So kind of go from there. Um, pretty solid start from both sides. So here you got a you got a good force setup, and then you're gonna gain some extra food from the silver eye that you can use to play big point birds like golden eagle, and then you get a rough cycling. So good thing going on here. Um, then, and then here, potentially, you know, you can run a grassland engine, but at the same time, because you're getting nectar from the grassland, so you're not missing out on the nectar points for other habitat. So, yeah. I think maybe we shall look at another starting hand here. So this is more or less a crash course here to look at um, a couple starting hands. So let's see. All right, um, huh, this is this is a good one as well. I, I like this. So definitely the first thing that jump out to me is the Pelated Whiphacker, Chickadee. That's a really strong, um, really strong four start there. Um, really like this. Um, Snow Bunting, certainly a wetland option. So they unlock card draw. And then can cycle card and counter tugging. Um, the peaceful dove. You know, if the peaceful dove, I still need to fill that out. I, I haven't played it that much. So basically, you discard a grain and lay one egg. So it's one to one exchange. Like value wise, it's not great. But being able to gain egg in the forest could potentially be huge. Um, but since I already have affiliated Woodpecker, so certainly not considering it in this case. Um, I mean, I can potentially potentially keep four birds. Um, keep four birds and then... I mean, yeah. Right? Even if I keep four birds, I still have Nectar. So I can immediately play Woodpecker and then game food. And then lay eggs and play the other bird. Yeah, I think even though the peaceful dove not, not I don't think it's great, but I think because of the extra nectar, um, and I think it could work. Um, maybe I should play this out and see how this works. Um, I mean that's the that's the that's the thing with Oceania. Now you get to keep four birds, and it's still gonna work out a pretty good tempo because of the extra nectar. So I'm interested to play this one out. So. Um, certainly Viticulturalist for good, for good vibe. Alright. Um, interesting. Okay. Um, so, Nuthatch for cheap for, forest bird, um, but for the, for the wetland, I'm thinking maybe the red wing parrot. Um, so... Potentially, if I play this in the wetland, I can gain eggs by giving my opponent nectar. I think in some cases, this could be good, even though you are giving out nectar. But being able to gain two eggs, it helped with tempo. So, again, not a lot of experience, but kind of want to experience experiment with this. So, yeah, I think this is a good one. Maybe you can play out a little bit and see how this works. Um, Anatomist, I'm just not familiar. Maybe, yeah. Wing? Wing is anatomous, right? So, okay. Um, again, because of the easy access to food, um, should be straightforward to play this. So, first thing I want to do, 
Um, Woodpecker. Um, okay, so now is the thing. Um, now if I if I see my opponent play my Woodpecker, initially the plan is to play the Nut Hatch and then do the Wing Parrot. Um, but if I do the Wing Parrot now, I can gain the free eggs. But that also means it would be hard for me to play the nut hatch. Um, maybe I should just be patient here, um, or not. I think I think I should just play the wing parrot, get the free egg, and then dig for cards. I mean, I don't have to commit to the nut hatch. It's it's not a must. Maybe the maybe the wobbler. Even the wobbler is a good pickup. Actually, that's one thing I didn't I didn't I didn't take a look. Um, I think for the woodpecker, you you have to pick up the wobbler here because it can continue to build up your your wetland engine. Um, rough, good pickup. That's no question about that. Um, let's see, got wood potentially for picking up extra cards, but you have to pick up the rough here because um, it's a quick start. All right, nothing to pick up in the tray. Hopefully, getting all the nectar. Yep. Only one. Miles is acting up here. All right, so I got one free egg. Now what? Now... I think you can dig one more time because you need... Because you need card to to shuffle under the rough anyway, so... Storm Patrol. Ooh, Swallow, I like that. Um, so, now the question is how do you play the Swallow? In this case, no question, play the Chickadee so that... you get the two eggs from the Woodpecker. Um, okay. Now the question is, how do you play this hand, right? Um, I think I need to I need to get down the nutcracker so that I can open up two food, um, and then maybe play the swallow in the grassland, as in old fashioned, old fashioned. Um, Old-fashioned grassland engine. Chuck a card. Um, I think the storm patrol is such a good art cycle um, for your wetland. So maybe chuck the godwit. All right, we get to reroll. That's amazing with all the nectar. Yeah, forest. Forest engine is getting such a boost in 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 Oceania because not only you you get more access to food, but you get access to nectar, and nectar is you know everything that you do um, in in Oceania. So okay, so I in this case I do want to get down the swallow so that. I don't miss an egg, but I also need to make sure I get the rough down, so... Yeah, this, this requires a little bit of thinking, so definitely want to play rough. Four turn, one, two... And then you draw a card to make sure I have enough card to... Um... To cycle on the rough, so I think I, I draw draw a card one more time. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't have space for eggs, but I could give a nectar to gain two food. Um, I think that might accelerate my tempo a little. So, um, gain two food. Yeah, I kind of like it. Um. All right, then now what? Now I have too much. Um, I mean, I don't have to play the bunting because there's no 
Um, there's no cycle card in sight. Maybe I play Peaceful Dove. Maybe, maybe I do play the Bunting so I can start picking up cards. So that's not a bad idea. Uh, Snow Bunting, right? And then three more turns. I need to play the Rough. Maybe play the Swallow. I mean, now it's a question. Because of the Bunting, the Swallow become a zero-point bird. So do you still play the Swallow? I mean, it might still be important for cycling card. But maybe play in the... Maybe play in the Forest? Um... Yeah, those are those are some in interesting decisions that, that need to be made, so I think it kind of makes sense to me that because of the bunting that nerfed the the swallow, maybe you do play the swallow in the forest. Um in this case, I still have two nectar that I have to spend. So, I think I have to draw a card and then somehow manage to spend those. Um, Stella J. Oof. Two food. It's gonna go to waste. Um, Stella J is still good for forest engine, so not complaining. Um, maybe I play the Pippet? We'll see. Yeah. I, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I, I really have a feeling that because of the bunting, I should just play in the forest so that I game food, cycle card, and go for the big point game instead of doing the grassland engine. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think. Um, and then in this case, you know, play, play the pipit. Um, because I don't want to waste the nectar food, and then next turn just continue to build on the the forest here, which which is gonna be really strong. If I have the peaceful dove, I have the wobbler and the stellar J. Um, this, I think, I think this this forest is is looking up pretty good. Um, in this case. Um, you know, running a forest, I can potentially play the, the Call of Dove here, so that could be quite good. Um, so last turn, I probably don't want to draw a card, wait for a new turn, so lightly just gain food. And unfortunately, I cannot take Nectar because it's going to be gone, so... Um, but deny the Nectar. Um, Untang. Yeah. Alright, what do I tuck here? I do like the Wobbler for cycling card. Um, maybe the Peaceful Dove. You know, hoping for better Forest Engineer, for example. Morning Dove um, could be a could be another Forester. So, um, not feeling gung ho about Nut Hatch, especially if I play the Call of Dove anyway. So. Maximize tagging here. So Yeah, I think I think that's where we're gonna wrap up. So like I say, this has a good forest build up. And then this, you know, let me know what do you think of the swallow in the forest? Was that a good decision? Um, in the tray, for example, yeah, lots of big point birds. The seagull, a big point. The mannequin, I like. I already mentioned it. Being able to play another bird at the end of the game. So, um, yeah, interesting to see how, how this game would develop. Um, and that's going to be a wrap for this video. Um, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little exercise here. Um, hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.